Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to do a video on how you set up a SegWit wallet in the Electrum Bitcoin wallet. So let's get going. So uh, I had one of my viewers ask me a question about uh, SegWit in Electrum Bitcoin wallet, and let me see if I can find that quote. Whoops. Let's see here. It's right there on the top. So let's go over here to the big screen. Hey guys, Crypto Dad. Thanks let's for joining. Turn off this video. And uh, here's our question from John Jay. Uh, will there be a video about SegWit and Electrum Bitcoin wallet? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. So uh, let's start off. We're going to launch our Electrum Bitcoin wallet. And in order to get into the features of Electrum Bitcoin Wallet, you have to at least open one. So we're going to go ahead and open this guy. Okay, so you can see I've got uh, one of my wallets open here, uh, which I created a while back. And we're running the latest version of Electrum 3.0.1. So if you're not running the latest version, I have a video where I explain how you do the upgrade from an earlier version to the latest version so I invite you to check that out and if you don't have a copy of Electrum wallet installed at all then I have a video that uh, shows you how to install it from scratch uh, how to download with verification and then run the installer and get your wallet set up so I would refer you to either of those videos uh, to get you up to speed here so let's say you've run your upgrade and uh, you've been running Electrum uh, Wallet uh, 3.0 and you've got some of your previous wallets that got upgraded and uh, you're curious how do you go about doing SegWit? Well it's sort of hidden in there so I'm going to show you how to reveal it. So uh, first of all let me just uh, go with this particular wallet if we go to info uh, we see that the script type is P2 PKH and that is the uh, legacy wallet type you know it's the old uh, type now let me just also point out that SegWit is not a hard fork to the Bitcoin blockchain SegWit is an upgrade uh, it's a software upgrade it's a soft fork so uh, it's still compatible with the Bitcoin network but it allows you to create a wallet uh, using a new type of address which is more efficient and uh, streamlined and your transaction should execute faster on the blockchain. Now it's not a hard fork. It's you're still using regular old Bitcoin BTC. It's not a hard fork like uh, Bitcoin Gold or Bitcoin Cash where uh, once you're using those it's a completely different cryptocurrency. So uh, now that I've explained a little bit about SegWit let's uh, launch one. So all we need to do is go over here to File and choose New, or Restore, and in this case uh, we're going to use New. So uh, this is a default uh, wallet name generator and you can name it anything you want. In this case we'll call this one uh, Crypto Dad Oops, SegWit. Oops, sorry guys. Uh, let's do underscore SegWit. and we're going to create a new wallet. We'll go next and it's going to be a standard wallet and then we go over here we're going to create a new seed because it's a new wallet and here we go. Here's that little hidden thing that was added with this latest upgrade. So uh, when you ran the upgrade on your existing wallets and you were using it before it didn't upgrade those wallets to SegWit. It, they were originally uh, legacy wallets and it remained legacy wallet. So if you want to use SegWit with the latest version of Electrum Bitcoin wallet you need to create a new wallet and when you get to the seed choice here we just choose SegWit. Simple as that. Let's hit next and here is our seed. Now uh, the seed we want to back up. So I like to copy it and we'll go over here and I'm going to go to software. I have a folder for uh, my Electrum, wherever it is. Uh, it's up here at the top. Okay. And I'm going to create a new text file. Text file is what you need because you want to keep this simple. 
We'll call this uh, crypto crypto dad segwit seed. So I can keep all these seeds straight. <laughs> Actually, I think there was one already in there, right? I, I did a little test on this. Okay. So then we all we do is we open up the text file, we paste in our seed, and we're good to go. Now what I like to do is this document right here, best practices, would be to uh, alter it a little bit. Let's say uh, we go down here. Well, eh, what the heck, let's do it. And we say uh, crypto dad. Segwit wallet created on uh, today's date is uh, November 30, 2017. And uh, we can print this guy out, and it's got a nice format to it, it's uh, easy to read and it has the information about what the wallet is and when it was created so that uh, you're not just ruffling through papers laying around and coming across this uh, seed and wondering gee when did I create this what wallet does it go to uh, it's a way to stay organized okay and then we'll save this guy and after we've done that we would want to delete this okay so after we printed it out we're gonna delete it off of our computer so that it's not just laying around on the computer if somebody were to come get on the computer and try to recover seeds or if someone hacked into the computer you want to keep your uh, seeds safe so printing it out uh, giving it some uh, identifying information storing it in a safe place is best practice I leave all these seeds laying around because uh, I'm Crypto Dad and I do a lot of demos and uh, I like to keep things simple. And I should also point out that when I reveal this seed to you for this wallet, uh, I make sure that I don't throw any cryptocurrency into this wallet because anyone anywhere can use these seeds that I'm revealing online to restore their wallet anywhere in the world to get access to my wallet that I've just created here and steal whatever Bitcoin happens to be in there. All they're going to do is transfer it out into a different wallet. So uh, enough about that. So now that I have this seed saved, I want to go to the next screen. And you'll notice here, if I click, I don't have a paste option. So I, it basically forces me to uh, copy this or retype this seed in. But uh, a little uh, trip to, uh, <laughs> tip to the lazy, if you copy and paste out of a text document, then lo and behold, the paste becomes active again. So we can be lazy. All right, so we'll click next. And we give this new wallet a nice password. And we click next. And lo and behold, we have just created a new wallet with a SegWit protocol. It's a SegWit wallet. Let's uh, open it up here. Now it says standard. Okay, that's because it's not a multi-sig or it's not a, a watching only cold storage type of wallet. It's just a standard Bitcoin wallet. So how do we know that this is a SegWit wallet? Well, let's go over here to wallet and choose information. And there we go, P2WPKH. That indicates that it is in fact using the new protocol and that it is a new uh, SegWit address. So there you go, that's it, not too difficult. Now, uh, another user asked me before, how do I know whether I should use SegWit or not, right? Well, my rule of thumb is I like to stay up to date, I like to keep up to date. If it's an upgrade, if it's better, then use it. Okay, and but here's an additional rule of thumb. If it's for me, and I'm going to store cryptocurrency in there, then I'll make it a SegWit, right? I want the newest thing, and I'm going to store it. Or if it's a new working wallet, and I'm going to use it to buy things, I'm going to use it to spend a lot. 
uh, maybe uh, overstock.com or newegg.com. If I want to use Bitcoin to make purchases there, I would uh, use a SegWit wallet. Why not use the latest, greatest thing? Now, here is the only use case where you might not want a SegWit wallet. Let's say that this wallet is going to be uh, designed mostly for receiving. So uh, you've created this wallet and you want to post the public address on your website or your blog and you want people to donate to it. In that case, it might be safer in the near future to go ahead and use a legacy Bitcoin address so that someone that's trying to send you Bitcoin is not going to have any issues. Okay, I want to be totally backward compatible with everyone if this is a receiving type of wallet. So I know uh, I fooled around with uh, Bitcoin faucets for a little while. You can go to websites where you can sign up for faucets. You give them a receiving address and then if you visit the website every day, they give you some micro Bitcoins or whatever. Um, that would probably be a use case where you would want to use uh, a legacy address. Or even if you're a miner and you're running a miner rig and you're joining a mining pool or you're uh, solo mining, uh, I don't know, maybe solo mining, you might want to go with SegWit. But anyway, uh, you want that address to be compatible. So uh, with receiving, you want to make sure that you get all the Bitcoin people are trying to send you. You might want to stick with legacy in those cases too. So uh, that's the long and short of it. Uh, if you're trying to get SegWit and you're using Electrum Bitcoin wallet, now you know how to do it. So once again, uh, thanks for the question. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, give me a like or a thumbs up. And uh, please subscribe to my channel. I love new subscribers. And if you're a subscriber, there's a little bell that you can uh, click next to the subscriber button, which will give you an alert anytime I post a new video. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again real soon. Thanks.